Hello my friends, how are you doing? The battle for background removal is on and today we're gonna look at Topaz Mask AI, Affinity Photo Selection Brush and Remove.bg. Let's see who is the best and why. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer sharing my industry secrets with you so maybe subscribe to my YouTube channel for free. The first contender is Topaz Mask AI. So let's start with a fresh picture here and see what this can do. So the first example is going to be a really easy picture. You can see here we have two people on a green screen. Now as Topaz Mask is always starting by overlaying everything with a green layer because it is using three colors to mark out the areas. Red is what you want to remove, green is what you want to keep and blue are the areas that are a little bit more complex with the finer details inside. Also we have two helping tools here that are automated we have the auto detect for subjects and the auto detect for sky. So of course in this case we're going to use auto detect subject. It takes a second and then you can see it has created these areas for us and can also understand multiple subjects in the same picture. So that is pretty cool. Now the next thing we want to look at is down here mask mode. It says AI which is AI supported and tries to figure out what kind of mask would be best for this kind of photo. The next one is translucent. This is best used in masks that you want to create for images that have transparent areas like a veil or like a glass or a bulb stuff like that, right? Also you have contrast which is perfect for this case because we have a high contrast background in form of a green screen. Also I forgot to mention that Topaz Mask AI is a software that you can install on your computer so you can use it on your device offline, right? Okay, let's use contrast here. Click on create mask and what we are seeing is this. Now we have two views, the preparation area and the result. But there is an even cooler view. When you go up here to view, you can go to four panes or panels, I would say. And what you get now is you have the preparation area, you have the alpha mask area, that's pretty cool. Then you have what you keep and what you lose. So that's pretty cool. You can zoom into that and all are zooming to the same area. So as you can see here, we have to refine the mask here a little bit. Let's do this real quick. I will paint in this area and you can see this is going to fix that pretty cool. And then let's go down here. We have two problems areas here, which is this one and also down here this one. As you can see, I can paint in here, but I can also paint in here if I want to. Uh, so you can paint in all of these areas here. Let's switch over to red as a color. And I want to make a stroke up here like so. You can see this fixed that area and then also a stroke up here and this fixed that area. So now we basically have a pretty good mask and that is very easy. But this also was an easy example. Let's go for another example here real quick. And this is a chair on a gray background. This is not too complicated. If we look at our original image, we have nice high contrast actually. In some areas it's a little bit lower contrast because the chair is gray on a gray background. But still let's click on select subject and this is what we get. Not perfect. Topaz Mask AI is not a one click solution. So we can paint in here a little bit and then also paint this in here just a little bit. Uh, uh, okay, let's click here on, let's say AI mask. Let's see what we get from that. Takes a little bit. By the way, you can select CPU. You can also select GPU. Right now I'm in CPU mode. You can see that the result is not too bad, but it's also not exactly perfect. So there is still some additional areas that need to be fixed. I will open the next picture here. I'm not going to finish this one because this is just to show you the different things and the qualities you get from that. Again, auto detect as a subject. 
and it finds the subject. That is pretty cool. It misses a little bit down here. That is easy. We can paint that out. Not a big problem. But now here is the thing. When you look at that hair in the original picture, you actually have a nice high contrast between dark hair and a bright blue sky. But when I now click on Compute Mask, there's a lot of blue left. I'm kind of confused why these areas are not better identified by the AI. And you can play with this and go backwards and forwards until you have a rather perfect result. Uh, you also can use these sliders over here, which mostly adjust the blue area where you can see you can adjust the edge hardness, the edge strength, the edge shift, foreground recovery, and also defringe. And with these sliders and also with a smaller adjustment from the brush, you can go in here and go backward and forward with your painting process and then try to make this as perfect as possible. When we want to talk about what can you export from that, this is also important. Down here you can go on save and you can see I can export the image in different formats of course and also with different compressions, color formats, so that's pretty cool. But what you can also do, this is maybe even more important, is you can also import the alpha channel export is what I should say here. You can export that mainly as a PNG or a JPEG. That's pretty good because it's a black and white image. And then you can import that as an alpha layer in other software tools to use that as a mask. And this means this will be then non-destructive because you still have the original image and then you have an alpha layer over that to create that mask. So this is very beneficial and really cool that you can do that. Let's go over to Affinity Photo real quick where we have our selection brush. Again, we're gonna start out with this simple example here and I'm just going to paint in these areas here, let's see, where we have the people. There is no auto detection in Affinity Photo, so you have to paint in these areas. Let's go over here onto the woman, the shoes also. I will ignore the sword now, right now and let's click on refine and you can see it does a kind of good job here. Let's refine that area. So basically similar in process to what you do in Topaz AI. This process is a little bit hit and miss on if it's actually doing good or not. But right now, as you can see, we get some pretty solid and quick results to figure out uh, what is what. So the hand selection is pretty good. Over here, we have a little bit of a problem with the face. Other than that, we get some quick and fast results with the selection brush in Affinity Photo. Let's click down here on mask. Again, you have a separate mask. It's pretty cool. This means that the process is non-destructive. And for this simple example, we are basically at a point where we have created a nice selection. Let's go to our chair example that is medium from the difficulty. So here we have the chair. We go to our selection brush tool again and paint this in real quick. And and now we can click on refine to see if we can improve that. So this is what we get. When we click on preview and black and white, we get actually a preview of what we have as an alpha channel here. And here we're going to see the first bigger problems. Some parts of the gray in the chair have the same gray as the background. And this is where it's getting confusing for the software. So you can go here now and try to paint in the foreground again and go backward and forward. Uh, but this is a longer process and a bit more complicated. And now we have the problem on the other side. You would have to go backward and forward. Let's go to our other example that we have here with our woman and the hair. So again, we're going to use our selection brush, make that a little bit bigger to paint in these areas here. So this starts out not too bad, actually. Let's try to keep uh, here the hair areas too go over this. So for now, I'm rather happy with what I'm seeing. Let's go to refine. Not too bad, actually. It would be cool to have these multiple previews at the same time where you see the photo and the mask at the same time. So you can actually see what is going on. Can use the matte again uh, to paint over these areas and try to see if we can get a better result. And of course, again, you have to invest some extra time to see if you can somehow fix this or not. And for hair, actually, 
Affinity Photo is not doing a too bad job. Now, the thing is that Affinity Photo is getting better the smaller the brush is, which is a little bit confusing why Refine is not going to have the same quality with a bigger brush than with a smaller brush. Uh, and it basically also means you have to go over these steps in a very small and detailed way can see here I have to go over every of these areas individually sometimes multiple times to get that but when we go over to black and white again you can see that this actually gives us kind of a nice satisfying um, result for that right so that is actually not too bad and actually also very interesting that in this regard we can get some nice selections of hair and also in a rather quick way to do that. So let's go to our last contender, which is remove.bg. And this is a little bit of a different tool because this is only online and it is meant as a one click solution because this is usually also used with an API in, for example, online stores. So you can present products and change out the background to put, for example, that chair into different rooms to show how it would look. And so this has to work without human interaction. And because of that, as you can see here, I have only uploaded this. You don't even need to click on remove background. You only upload the image and it's doing the rest for you. And as you can see here with the example, it's not that bad. It's actually giving you pretty good results. This is also a nice removal. It even realized that there's this sword. It even took in the two cables. So this is actually pretty good AI for automatic background removal. So here is the final verdict. Affinity Photo is a great tool. It makes really good selections that are fine and detailed. It has a lot of tools that you can use to refine your mask and selection. And of course, you can create a non-destructive mask, but Affinity Photo might need some more time and knowledge to really create good masks. Topaz Mask AI, on the other hand, gives you a lot of support for that with the AI, with the automatic uh, subject and background or sky detection and the tools you can use to make these selections. So the process is faster, but it doesn't have as much tools to refine the mask afterwards as Affinity Photo has. So while it is quicker, it is not as in-depth. And the fastest and easiest to use is remove.bg, but it's also the one where you can't really do much afterwards because this is meant as a fully automated tool. So the editing of the selection afterwards is very rudimentary and also there isn't really a possibility to download an alpha layer from that and work in a non-destructive way. Thank you very much for watching and see you in my next tutorials. Bye.